now Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda. The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his fiance, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, The Golden Idol. All right, lady, that's far enough. Leave me alone. What's your hurry? There's nowhere left to run to. Keep back. Get away. Please. Oh, well, since she said please. <laughs> <laughs> don't get cute, sister. Just give us the money and you don't have to get hurt. I don't... I don't have any money. Please. Oh, I... that's a shame. Why does it always have to be the hard way? Get back. I'll scream. Sure thing. Scream your head off. Who do you think is going to come running? I will. Who the heck is that supposed to be? And why is he falling from the sky in yellow pajamas? Ask your stupid questions later, knucklehead. Blast him! <laughs> Save your bullets, lads. They're no use against me. He's right. The bullets just bounce right off of him. Let's get out of here. Oh, no, you don't. Not before I teach you a lesson. <laughs> oh. oh, you saved my life. How can I ever thank you? No thanks are necessary, ma'am. I'm just doing my job. But if you did want to thank me, there is one thing you could do. Anything. Make sure you tell as many folks as you can what happened here tonight. It's the only way that the ordinary citizens of the city can know that they're safe from this kind of criminal scum and worse. And the only way that these kind of cowardly parasites can know that their days at the top of the food chain have come to an end. But who are you? You can call me the Golden Idol. Good night, and be safe. I will, I will, thank you. And I tell you, Detective, that's exactly how it happened. This Golden Idol flew straight up into the sky. Well, thank you, Mrs. Walker. You paint a very vivid picture. I almost feel like I was there myself. You don't believe me. I've seen some pretty remarkable things in my time, ma'am. Though a flying man dressed in... What was it? A gold-colored leotard and cowl with a matching cloak? It was more of a cape. I'm not sure I know the difference. You had to be there. I'm sure. At any rate, it sounds like you've had quite an exciting evening. The desk sergeant will assign a man to drive you home. Thank you, detective. Oh, my. Excuse me. Ma'am? Chief O'Malley... Oh, uh, this is Mrs. Walker. I was just taking her statement. Yes, of course. Thank you for coming in, Mrs. Walker. Oh, thank you. And you should give that brave young man a medal. I take it she didn't mean you, Parker. No, sir. It was another one of these Golden Idol reports. Mm, that's five cases in the last three nights. Yes, sir. The M.O. is in line with the other reports. A couple of thugs after her purse were taken down. Hmm. Seems like a funny way for a bulletproof flying man to spend his time. It does, a little. I sent a prowl car around. There was no sign of either of her playmates, but more than an hour had passed by then. Oh, in any case, it won't make a certain masked man very happy. Sir? Don't play dumb, Parker. It doesn't go well with the promotion. Uh, yes, sir. They say the Red Panda keeps other masked vigilantes out of Toronto. I suppose you're right to think he won't be pleased with this golden idol interloping. No, I suppose he won't. I'm a little surprised that he hasn't stuck his head in my office window yet. But, sir, you ordered the case locked down. There's been no news in the press. No, no, there hasn't. Or anywhere else. I don't understand. I don't pretend to know everything, Detective Parker, but don't assume that I'm an idiot. Chief, I... It was no secret that the Red Panda backed you up when you brought down those dirty cops that were working for the syndicate. A lot of things made sense after that. I assigned you to this case for a reason, Detective. The same reason that I ordered these reports be kept quiet. You were testing me? Don't look so sore. You passed. Chief O'Malley... I... Are you telling me you're taking me off the leash? I'm telling you that it doesn't much matter now, son. Here's the Evening Chronicle. The new face of justice. That's quite a headline. 
I didn't know they made typeset that large. Somehow I think that will get his attention. Extra, extra, read all about it. Golden Idol strikes again. Get the telegram. Live witness reports another Golden Idol sighting. Only in the telegram. Sentinel evening edition. Mayor to proclaim Golden Idol city's official protector. Get the Sentinel right here. First ever photographs of city's new champion. Golden Idol photo only in this morning's Chronicle. <laughs> There you are. Oh, hello, kid. I didn't expect to see you so early. Have you had breakfast? What? Breakfast. It's a meal consumed early in the... Never mind. Weston, would you have Cook make Miss Baxter some eggs? Very good, sir. Oh, nothing for me, thanks. I'm... He ignored me. Hmm. Yes. I told him I wasn't hungry. Yes, but I told him to bring you eggs. And we're not married just yet... Which means he works for me. I don't want eggs. Yes, you do. You're famished. Says who? You've been eyeing my toast since you walked in. I can't believe you're this calm. I try not to get excited when there's bacon on the table. Bad for the digestion. Have some coffee. You're still in your robe. I noticed that. Before I was in my robe, I was in my bed. For about four hours. The 36 hours prior to that, we were trying to foil a doomsday plot concocted by our old friend Captain Clockwork. You're saying you don't care about this golden idol business? I didn't mean to imply that in the slightest. I just haven't had time to get properly annoyed. Well, let me get you started. I wish you would. Did you know the mayor has called on council to proclaim him the official protector of Toronto? That was quick. Quick? What? The guys busted up what? Half a dozen petty crimes? We just saved the city from being attacked by an army of wind-up monsters. And did such a good job that no one even noticed it was happening. Or in this case, not happening. Right. Oh, wait. I think I see your point. Many of our most important cases happen in total secrecy, Kit. When I first put on the mask of the Red Panda, it was months before anyone outside of the criminal underworld even knew I existed. Then I was a rumor, a legend. No one knew anything, and there were certainly no pictures in the paper. In some ways, our enemies were more frightened of me then. Which is just as well, since you didn't have something soft and squirrel-like to watch your back. As you say... This golden idol seems to have a remarkable flair for grandstanding. Look at this photo in the Chronicle. Ah, Exhibit B. The light's perfect. The angle is dramatic. That's got to be staged, boss. Do you think the servants would wonder why you still call me boss? If the servants were listening, we'd have bigger problems. That's a fair point. So, he contacted a Chronicle photographer and scheduled a photo shoot. I'd like to have a word with that shutterbug. That's a good place to start. I I just can't believe the cops sat on this story for days, and we didn't hear beans from our boy in blue. Not that we weren't otherwise occupied, but Spiro sent a spotter around to Parker's apartment when he didn't report on schedule. There was a lamp lit on the window ledge. What does that mean? My girlfriend's over. Go to the movies? It means he was being watched. O'Malley? Who else? That man would get so much more done if he learned to trust us. I'm sure he'd be less than thrilled if he knew his new detective is one of our most trusted agents. I'll pay a visit to the Chronicle. In the meantime, we need to put together as much information as we can on this golden idol. Such as? A full analysis of superhuman attributes he has already displayed, a projection of what other abilities known operatives with his skill set have been known to possess and a working theory on the source of his powers. To help with the takedown? Only if he doesn't get out of town by sundown. Hmm. Tough talk, Sheriff. My city, my rules. (laughs) Stop it, you're making me crazy. Kit Baxter, behave yourself. (laughs) Make me. Oh, my. Uh, hello, Weston. Eggs? Eggs. Eggs. Right. Is... is someone there? Don't be nervous. It's just me. Oh. (laughs) Sorry, mister. These streets get so dark, uh, I guess I heard footsteps and... Your imagination just kind of ran away with you. Sure. You know how it is. Oh, I know how it is. You probably just started to think some sort of crazed homicidal supervillain was looming up behind you. Sure. Yeah, that kind of thing. (laughs) 
<coughs> you okay, mister? Oh, yes, just a bit of a cough. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, not at all, my good man. I- indeed, I'm glad I ran into you. As you say, it's awfully dark night. <laughs> Perhaps we can walk a ways together. After all, two may pass more safely than one. Well, all right. Come on. Do you work back at the plant? At the... No, no, I'm a little more uh, freelance, as they say. I don't think I understand. I'm uh, self-employed. Oh, well, don't worry. Something will come along. Quite. Tell you the truth, I'm awfully glad to have a bit of company tonight. Is that a fact? Yes. The payroll just came in at the plant, and I've been pulling in a lot of overtime. Oh, yes. The baby hasn't been well. You know how it is. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, it's not that serious, but things have been tight. It'd just be a bad time to get mugged, is all. Is there ever really a good time? (laughs) I guess not. I I suppose you feel a lot safer these days, don't you? Why is that? Well, this golden idol that simply everyone is talking about. What, that fellow in the silly yellow cape? I hear he cuts quite a striking picture. If you say so. Though for my money, I always felt pretty safe with the red panda watching over the city. But I suppose he can't be everywhere. The red panda? But this golden idol is bulletproof. He can fly. I heard the red panda can fly. No, he can't fly. Where did you hear that? I don't know. Around. His partner can fly. She glides. She's called the flying squirrel. And a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. All right. Jeez. You seem real particular about it. Not at all. I I would just think that people would know a real hero when they see one. Well, I've never seen the golden idol. Maybe that'll change. (laughs) Holy moly. Did you see that? See what? There was a big... I don't know, like a dog, but not a dog. Not a bit like a dog. Or it was the biggest granddaddy raccoon you've ever seen. Well, there it is again. It's... It's... Oh, that. That's just my loyal minion, Beauregard. Say hello to the nice man, Beauregard. That, that's a baboon. Then you... You must be... I really must, mustn't I? And if my old nemesis has himself some competition, you can bet that the mad monkey won't be far behind. (laughs) You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Not at all, Editor Pearly. I know how busy you must be. Never too busy for the man that owns the Chronicle building and everything in it, including me. And if there's any chance of you ever calling me Tim, it would help me to relax. I'll see what I can do. Thanks. What can I do for you? I was just a little curious about the picture of this golden idol that ran this morning. You and everyone else in the city. We sold out the entire print run in an hour this morning. We had to run a special edition. Well, that's excellent. Yes, I hope you'd like that. It was quite a striking photograph. I wonder if you could tell me who took it. What's that? Oh, Henderson. Rink Henderson, one of our best staff men. Is he in the office? I'd quite like to congratulate him personally. No, actually, I've got him out at the legislature today on an assignment. But I'll be sure to tell him how pleased you were. In fact, I was a little curious about the circumstances under which that picture was taken. Oh, yes? Well, I'm no expert in such things, of course, but it seems to me that... Well, the light just so, and the striking angle... You're wondering if it was posed. Well... You're a man after my own heart, sir, if you don't mind my saying. I had the same thought when I saw that photo. If Rink Henderson had some connection to this golden idol, some means of contacting him, why, just think of the number of papers we could sell. How many do you think? If he really were prepared to be photographed once in a while, the sky's the limit. Why, just look at the sales figures we pull with that same old picture of the red panda from the Empire Bank heist last year. We keep blowing it up and cropping it differently, and still it sells. Perhaps the Red Panda feels that revealing too much might make his enemy's job easier. Well, the Golden Idol doesn't seem to share his concerns. Makes no difference to me. I'm trying to run a newspaper, not fight evildoers. The public wants the whole story on this new mystery man, and by golly, we're going to give it to them. Are you saying that Henderson does know how to contact the Golden Idol? No, that's the crying shame of it. He swears in a stack that it was a million to one shot. He just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Mm, But, Tim... I know how it sounds. But I've known Rink Henderson 20 years, and he's never told so much as a tall tale in all that time. If he says he doesn't know the idol, he doesn't. But I'll find someone who does, don't you worry. Chief, you've got to get out here. What is it? 
A guy just walked in that swears the Golden Idol saved him from a gang of toughs last night. Another one? Sure. But, Chief, this one's got it all. The guy works at a factory. He'd just been paid for a mess of overtime he worked to try to pay the doctor's bills for his sick baby. If they'd lost that money, they'd have been finished. And he swears the Golden Idol saved them. Say, that is quite an angle. You say he's in the office? Has he talked to any other papers? Nah, he's all ours. I'd like to speak to him, too, if I may. Sure thing. The more the merrier. Let's go, boys. We've got a paper to sell. It was quite a remarkable story, Squirrel. The young man was very convincing. Sure thing, boss. I read it all in the Evening Chronicle. But I don't see how it helps us that much. The powers the idol used to break up that gang were more of the same. Flight, invulnerability, some enhanced strength and speed, but no real proof of the limits of either. That uh, puts us right about where we started. Sounds like you didn't have a lot of luck with your research project. Those are some pretty detailed files you've got on known superhumans, good and bad. There are dozens that fit that profile, but none of them checked out. I uh, made some calls to try and finagle some more info, but uh, we aren't exactly Mr. and Mrs. Popularity with the International Mystery Man set. They wouldn't talk to you. Oh, they talked. They just didn't say much that a lady would care to repeat. <laughs> I can tell you that the Justice Union is already set to approach the Golden Idol about membership, based on the usual not much. If those buffoons get a toehold in the city, we'll never get them out. That's a little harsh, don't you think? We don't have super speed or magic rings, and we can't afford to trust brightly clad, poorly trained people who do. You're preaching to the choir, Pappy. But they mean well, and maybe our big yellow friend does too. Where are you now? I thought I'd track down that photographer, Henderson. What? You don't trust Editor Pearly? It's not that. When that eyewitness came into the Chronicle, it took me a little while, but I managed to get a quiet moment to speak to him. And? He wouldn't hypnotize. What? I couldn't press the spell too much without my mask, but he was completely resistant. But that takes... well, that takes an awful lot of training. Yes. Unless you're already under someone else's mental control. What? It's just a theory. The phenomena can occur naturally, but if Rink Henderson shows a similar resistance, it'll gain a lot more weight. Where are you? Just running a rooftop patrol in the area your shutterbug took his one in a million shot. Thought lightning might strike twice. It's a good thought. Be careful. I'm a big girl. I noticed. Good night, Gracie. Squirrel out. All right, whoever you are. You can forget about sneaking up on me. I know the sound of a pistol being cocked when I hear it. It's the sound I usually hear right before I make a grown man cry like a little girl. Ah, the witty repartee. How I've missed you, dear girl. I know that voice. Indeed you do, princess. Indeed you do. (laughs) The mad monkey. Still just as quick with the blazingly obvious, too. (laughs) Nice and slow. It would be a shame to spoil that lovely outfit with a bullet hole. <laughs> Where's your girlfriend? Jack Rabbit? We're taking some time apart. She dumped you, didn't she? It was a mutual thing. Uh-huh. Shut up! <laughs> you have more to worry about just now, my dear girl. Aren't you forgetting about the Red Panda? To say nothing of the Golden Idol. Forgetting? Dear heart, I'm absolutely counting on them. <laughs> There you are. You had me worried sick. Why didn't you answer your radio ring? I sent out a beacon. And I followed it. That doesn't really answer my question. Don't you want to know what I found? Not as much as I want to know why you didn't follow procedures. You're awful big on rules. Anybody ever tell you that? Those rules were created to keep us safe. To keep our agents safe. To give us all a fighting chance. Sometimes rules are made to be broken. Is that a fact? Like your rules about sharing the city with other mystery men. 
Why is it I think I know exactly what you found? See? You're a clever boy after all. You found this golden idol? Sure, I found him. And I talked to him. And so should you. And why is that? If we're supposed to work together... We're not supposed to work together. Am I interrupting something? Ah, the golden idol, I presume. That's right. It's a pleasure to meet the famous Red Panda. I don't really do autographs, thanks. Don't mistake my enthusiasm, though you have done pretty well for yourself here. For a guy with no superpowers, I mean. Thanks, I try and keep in shape. Your, what, flight enhanced strength to usual ubermensch package? More or less. Space alien, chemical enhancements, mechanical implants? You don't expect me to tell you all of that on the first date, do you? It would save a little time, but it won't change the results. Why don't you just let me buy you a bus ticket right now? Why do you have to be like that? Squirrel? He's here to help. Things are getting worse. Has it ever occurred to you that we'd all have a better chance of living through this with some high-powered help? Are you shilling for this leotarded menace? What if I am? Do you remember where I was going when I spoke to you last? Do I... do I remember where? I was on my way back to the lair. Right! The lair! No, I was on my way to see the photographer, Rink Henderson. He wouldn't hypnotize either. He wouldn't what? Very clever. Yes, you see, he was already under someone else's mental influence. Just like the witness at the Chronicle building. Just like all of the witnesses who think they've seen the Golden Idol in action. Well, who is it? Nick Diablos? Ajay Shah? Respectively, they're catatonic and still dead as far as I know. Think again. Someone much closer. Oh, so clever. Why do you have to be like this? Why does everything need to be a song and dance? The Great Red Panda, right about everything again. Sleep. I hated to freeze her in her tracks like that, but this little scene was progressing a little too quickly, and I haven't had time to gloat. Allow me to take off my mask. I know who you are, mad monkey. <laughs> oh, you horrible brute. How I've missed you. I wish I could say the feeling was mutual. As you can see, I have continued to refine my new mind control power. I liked you better when you were den mother to a troop of baboons. Come now. You have to admit, as revenge ploys go, this one is pretty good. When we first met, all I wanted was a cut of your angle. But once I've taken over the superheroing in this little burg, I'll make it pay like villainy never did. Sooner or later, someone will notice the total lack of criminals left behind at the scene of your rescues. Not until after it's far too late. Haven't you heard? The mayor is about to make me official hero to the city. <laughs> That's got a sting. <laughs> sinister fiend. You used your mental powers on him, too, didn't you? Yes. But that's nothing compared to what I'm about to do. When I snap my fingers, your little partner will awaken, full of fury and resentment. We get to find out who's tougher. Either she'll kill you, or you kill her. Then I'll take out the trash. I can't wait. One, two, three. Now, my dear, don't hold back. If you say so. Oh! Oh, oh, no! No! Oh, no, it's impossible! My mental powers! No one can resist them! How did you... Lots and lots of practice. Your mind powers are very close to a form of natural hypnotism, monkey. And after a few... incidents, I took precautions to make the flying squirrel impervious to such attacks. Very clever. But you'll never stop me! I have dozens under my influence already. Yes, about that. What are you up to? One calling 148. Red Panda here. Let them go. Over. Let who go? Your telepathic gifts are naturally tuned to the mental harmonics of the baboon. You told us once you hear their thoughts become the nexus of their hive. So what? You developed your powers over humans when deprived of your sinister simians. All but one. Right. The presence of one monkey mind stimulated your powers and allowed you to reach out to men. But my guess is that your powers would revert were your mind cluttered with the angry thoughts of your brothers in fur. What are you talking about? Look over the ledge, golden idol, and you'll see some new friends climbing up the building. No! No! 
Oh! Leaping lizards! Where'd you get all those baboons? Mm -hmm. I made a few calls. No! Please, get... Get out of my head! Get out of my... I'm back! My brothers! I'm back! And now, the knockout gas... <laughs> That was some pretty impressive guesswork. It stood to reason, since the Mad Monkey only developed his new, more dangerous powers when deprived of his tribe of baboons, the interference of their minds might cancel out his power over humans and free his victims' minds. I meant it was a good guess that I really wasn't going to clean your clock. Ah, well, it seemed logical. Besides... You were a little curious. Kit Baxter... <laughs> Behave yourself. Yes, boss. And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda. This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, Episode 43, The Golden Idol, was written and directed by Greg Taylor, with original music by Andrea Lyons, and featured the vocal talents of Peter Nichol, Stephen Burley, Christopher Mott, Monica Cote, Kevin Robinson, Michael Booth, Clarissa Denander-Landon, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night.